everybody. It's Pete Renzulli. Welcome to today's episode of Stock Trading Pro. And more importantly, Stocks for Breakfast, something we do every Monday morning. Make sure you join us, 7.30 Eastern Time. Got a big list of things we're going to talk about today. Plenty on tap. The big thing you want to write down for today, and probably the uh, context for everything we're about to talk about, is pick a side, then pick a spot. So I think everybody can pick a side right now, especially with the way technology has rocketed the market higher for all of 2023, really. The exciting thing that happened last week was we had sector rotation and Finally, somebody else besides semiconductor stocks or anything related to AI uh, kind of lifted the market on Friday, and we had an amazing, amazing move higher. Now, the big thing with this week, and I know uh, this is kind of a longer-term planning for the entire week and not just necessarily today, is it's not going to be hard. As a matter of fact, let's, let's take out that double negative. It's going to be easy to find stocks with stacked order flow. The question is the optimal entry. That's the big thing we're going to focus on today. We're also going to work some stocks on the other side of the market, short selling, just in case the debt ceiling news that's kind of out of the way, which, by the way, we're going to talk about the, the news heading into the week first. In case the debt ceiling news becomes a sell the news event after the market opens and we kind of work our way into this week. So what we're going to discuss today right now, first, we're going to talk about AI stocks and whether or not the AI Bubble has ran its course and set up some new entries into those stocks. Uh, we're going to discuss sector rotation. We're going to discuss OPEC. The last time OPEC made an announcement like they did today about oil cuts, bam, gigantic gap to the upside, and then nothing, <laughs> absolutely nothing. We're actually going to show you the chart. Is today going to be a little different? Will we actually pop up, rally, and stay there? I don't know. All I know is last week we actually mentioned that the energy stocks and the healthcare stocks are getting less bearish. But remember, less bearish does not mean bullish. There's a very, very big difference. And that means different trade management, especially on sell short opportunities. So we're also going to talk about short sale opportunities and whether or not they're a good idea to use as a hedge in case we see some profit taking this week. So you can hold those long positions, the stocks that you own, and make some money as weak stocks go down if the market starts to roll over a little bit this week and we see some profit taking. And then finally, we're going to build a big list of stocks for the watch list for this week. Uh, and as I said, we're going to cover some short selling ideas. Uh, so stick around. Be back in just one second. OK, so it would be um, it would be a shame if I didn't do this today. Obviously, um, the uh, founder, uh, William O'Neill of Investors Business Daily passed last week. And I know myself personally and, gosh, probably every active trader that I've ever been with, he influenced us in ways that just really gave price action um, structure, both from a fundamental perspective and from a technical perspective. And he's probably one of the first persons to use uh, software, uh, computers to really put all this stuff together to come up with good ideas. But I think more importantly, he kind of squashed that debate over which one is the right way to be involved in the stock market. Is it technical analysis? Is it fundamental analysis? People are always on two different sides of the market. Uh, and he kind of said, why can't we do both? And he came up with the canceling system. So uh, William O'Neill, rest in peace. Thank you so much for everything you've done for everybody who's involved uh, in the markets. So we're actually going to start out first with the news stories for the week, at least the ones that I'm paying attention to today. Before we kind of get into all of the list of stocks, I do think the market's going to take a little bit of a pause on the technology side of things. However, sector rotation, and I'm going to show you some charts and give you a big list, have pretty good ideas in stocks that we haven't watched in a while. One of those groups industrials, which carried the entire stock market for the last four months of 2022, exploded on Friday. And I'm going to show you the top two stocks that we traded inside of our community. Uh, and maybe you can have those lists uh, as well. So first, uh, let's actually go over the news from uh, that we're going to take a look at heading into today. So obviously the debt ceiling, right? This was actually a monster story that we've been paying attention to for a while now. Um, look, I, I think everybody has their opinions on whether or not this is a good situation that they negotiated a deal and blah, 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 right? The government's not going to shut down. Um, I, you know, look, I'm, un I'm under the impression that when you have to extend credit to somebody who can't pay it, it's not a good deal. Unfortunately, we live in such a um, short term thinking society uh, that right now we're all excited that this 
uh, is kind of out of the way, for lack of a better way of putting it. So everybody's on two sides of that right now. I don't think that the fact that we need to extend it is a good thing. But what the stock market likes is a lack of indecision. So you get that indecision out of the market. All of a sudden now the market uh, is kind of like, okay, that's done. Let's move to the next story. I think this is kind of going to play itself out Monday and Tuesday. We're going to see a little bit of profit taking, um, but I'm going to give you some other ideas. Uh, so the next big story um, is obviously the Fed rate cut, which is next week. I believe it's Thursday, uh, 13th and 14th is the next meeting. Let's actually just take a look at that on the calendar. Uh, yeah, so the 14th next Wednesday at 2 o'clock Eastern time is when they announce. Now, I know there's percentages and probabilities and all that kind of thing right now. Um, look, the economy has to be separated from the market. A lot of people have been bearish on the market based on the fact that inflation is still high. But what a lot of people are not paying attention to is inflation's coming down a little bit. Uh, and the Fed is kind of waffling on what they're going to do for the next announcement. So why is this so significant? Really, what makes this so significant right now is you need to make sure that you understand if you are building swing trade positions, which means positions that are not day trades and you plan to hold them a little bit longer, uh, it's very important to game plan knowing that the Fed is coming up next week and whether or not you plan to hold those positions into a Fed announcement. You know, last week um, or within the last couple of weeks, we had a two really big opposite trades, uh, one where NVIDIA stock obviously just exploded to the upside after reporting. And then what kind of got lost in the shuffle is snow on the other side had this massive move to the downside. So it's 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 been very hit or miss on these earnings. It's It really hasn't been like little moves. They've been like amazing or implosions. The Fed announcement could kind of be the same thing. So if you have swing trades heading into next Wednesday, now, seven days before that happened, is the time to plan what you are going to do into that. Now, the way that I generally handle swing trades into big announcements, including earnings announcements, is I like to have a, uh, I'll call it a reasonable head start on a profitable trade. And usually that means I want to be up a certain percentage in my favor or a certain average true range move in my favor in order to justify for myself to carry those overnight, excuse me, to carry those overnight positions. So justifying it, you need to know that with the Fed coming out. So that could be different for everybody, but just make sure you're aware of that. And that's just good planning. Okay. Um, all right. So obviously the Fed next week, that's a big deal. Uh, I want to just talk about OPEC here for a little bit. Um, again, oil prices rise, blah, 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 right? Let's actually take a look at the last time this happened. We'll, we'll take a look at crude oil. And before everybody just starts to jump in there and make this into like one of the most exciting things, oh my gosh, I got to start getting long energy stocks. This is where it happened the last time. Okay, we actually, we we as a community have been watching this 82 level in crude for a while. And you can see boom, 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 right? It was support, resistance for all this time. Yeah, baby, OPEC, good news, finally popping out of there. Let's start building positions in these energy stocks. Right around that same time, Exxon Mobil, right near that all-time high. Yeah, baby, here we go. It's going to lift the entire sector. Well, this is what the difference is between somebody who is good at reading the tape versus somebody who blindly follows headlines. This is interesting. It's exciting. It's a catalyst that's important to watch. But the last time it happened, we got up here, went sideways. Great. We paused rallied, broke out. Wow, significant number. And then the next five weeks, just an absolute dump fest. So if you are trading the headline here for OPEC and how important this is, the way that we look at things is you have two types of really uh, classic trades, for lack of a better way of putting that. Before you're looking to buy a stock, you want to have obvious order flow, especially you want to have stacked order flow, which means that institutions, those stocks have institutional attention and you can start to track those smart money footprints for how long they've been actually doing something. And usually you can see that with price action and volume. And that's really where trading conviction comes from. Trading conviction leads to holding good trades longer. Sometimes it means trading bigger and best case scenario, if you're really on top of your game, Trade bigger and hold longer, and those trades are the ones that really can make your entire month, maybe even your quarter, right? This particular situation, or the other way of finding good stock picks, is a catalyst. There's been a lot of really good short-term catalysts that we've been able to take advantage of, 
obviously the biggest catalyst that most people trade is earnings, right? Earnings, good, good pushes to the upside and majority of the stocks that we saw, a little bit of profit taking coming in, which again, you can quote me on this. I think technology stocks are going to have to take a little bit of a break this week, which again, is not a bad thing. And I'm going to walk you through the newsletter today, which you can download uh, to understand what's actually going on in the market. And again, this is why you know, I wanted to start out today with um, with William O'Neill, because a big part of his process when, you know, when you're reading IBD and, and a lot of these other publications, money goes from one sector into another. And the reason it stops or slows down in a sector that's on fire is because the reward potential has now diminished for the amount of risk you need to take. So generally what happens, it's pretty easy to find the side to trade on. But remember, the only reason we choose to accept risk is because the reward potential is likely and it's worth it. That's the part that a lot of people miss. And raise your hand if you've ever been like, wow, that stock is super obvious. You get in and then it goes in your favor one day and then all of a sudden it goes down the other five days. That's because you didn't time the entry. So remember, risk reward is a big part of what we do. And everybody knows that little three to one risk reward number, right? But <laughs> what a lot of people fail to recognize or maybe even fail to understand how to do is whether or not that three in the three to one risk reward is likely. That's why we choose to accept the risk. So a lot of these AI stocks are way beyond their normal move. And it's actually a healthy thing for them to pull back a little bit and then us shift our buying power, shift our capital into some other ideas that are now still at optimal entries and have likely profit potential for the next move. We'll keep an eye on the AI stocks as they pause and pull back. And there's, there's also a couple of other stocks like CRWD and Net and Palo Alto Networks. We'll, get, we'll show those charts in a second. Where they're on fire, they just need to pause uh, just a little bit. I just want to make sure I say hello to somebody today. Um, Simon is actually in our final boot camp ever, which actually ends today. Uh, and Simon, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being a part of our boot camp. It means a lot to me that you went from uh, watching us on YouTube and um, made your way in the, into the community with us. Uh, I hope I exceeded your expectations. You had an amazing, amazing couple of weeks to be a part of the boot camp. I really appreciate it. Um, okay. All right. So let's hop into some of the ideas that we want to talk about uh, for this week. So obviously, this is what the market did last week. So this is actually a five-day performance of very specific criteria that I use. This is not the S&P 500. This has stacked bullish order flow over a period of time, as well as it traded very well on Friday. So we actually, one of the biggest things that we look for is we look for energy candlesticks and making sure that we actually got follow through on those ideas, not only for the last few days, but also we got separation from where it opened on Monday and traded higher. Probably one of the biggest ideas, and I, make, I want to make sure that I give you this one because this is something that we were watching um, and trading in a really, really big way on Friday. What's most exciting about this right now for me in, um, in the bigger picture is it's becoming pretty obvious where money is starting to rotate on a daily and weekly basis. And you can see now Caterpillar, which was – one of the stronger stocks to end last year, as we talked about before, just had an amazing day on Friday. Not only amazing day, but look at the volume that poured in over here and not really that much profit taking. So one of the biggest things that we make sure that we train everybody who's in our community is you need to spend that just you know, that extra 10 or 15 minutes where you make that distinction of what happened today and how does that play into what is going on in the big picture. So now this trade in Caterpillar, if I can just go back to that chart one more time and kind of bring your visualization back to, right? Everybody in trading is like, I'm a visual learner. You can see that the trend of order flow in Caterpillar, and you can even go back all the way over here to February since this bullish move ended, the trend of the order flow has been bearish. It's been pushing to the downside. So we basically have February, March, April, and May, right? Four months of selling pressure and one strong day of buying pressure. So you can now visualize in your mind four months of selling, one day of buying, that one day of buying was amazing. So what does that mean, right? What does that actually mean from a trade perspective? Like that's like kind of the golden ticket that everybody wants, right? Okay, I get it. <laughs> I see it. I understand it. 
but what does that actually mean for how I should place my next trade? So one of the things you want to write down, and again, these are the big things, you know, we call them the, the post-it note uh, lessons, right? Initial reversals require initial position size. So there's two different ways to be trading the industrial stocks right now, especially this trade in Caterpillar. If we're looking for a longer term play, which is the similar to that big move, four month move we had at the end of 2022, followed by a four month move to the downside. If we're looking for the next move and we believe that big, beautiful energy candlestick that Caterpillar traded into on uh, Friday, if we believe we're looking for a bigger move, it's only one day. So from a position perspective, initial reversal equals initial position size. That's a little bit different than if we were looking to start building a position in this move here. So you can actually see when this move ended, and we, I love to draw these trend lines just to keep it super simple. We finally broke this trend line and then we produced another energy candle over here. We now at this point have a couple of weeks of buying pressure stacked order flow versus just one day. So a couple of weeks, you could start to work a little bit more initial position size versus one day. Now that's different than if you happen to be on the day trading side of things. And this is what the stock produced on Friday. If you happen to be day trading these kinds of moves where you're on top of sector rotation, you're on top of the market internals and you have everything mapped out beautifully so that you spot it while it's unfolding, you can get in there with a little bit more aggressive position size because you're day trading stop loss and the fact that you're at your machine, you're, you're literally at your computer where if you're swing trading, you might be working a full-time job and you have to place those stop orders before the market opens. If you're day trading and you see this kind of price action, then you can get in with a little bit more because you're sitting there. So two different ways to skin uh, the same idea. So obviously you can see all the green on the screen. Picking a side right now is ridiculously, ridiculously easy. The question at this point is which stocks are actually at or near optimal entries, which makes the next trade a pretty good one starting for today. So one stock I do want to point out that kind of exploded last week, uh, which we've been actually two. I want to give you two ideas that we've been watching um, and maybe you could keep an eye on this as a follow up to watch is one is Carvana. And you can see on the bottom right hand chart over here, you can actually see the volume expanding on the breakout. You can see we were kind of stuck between that 10 and $13 level. You can actually see that the next level up here is 20. Now, what's kind of interesting about this is the perfect entry obviously was being on top of the breakout, something we talked about in our community last week. Now, what's kind of interesting is we're beyond the optimal entry. We had an energy candlestick breaking out of that, what you might call accumulation and really kind of minor resistance up around 20. So for me, I call this a two-step trade. Even though the stock paused on Friday, we're a little beyond the perfect entry, which was right around that $12 level. So we're really about three, three and a half dollars beyond that perfect level. However, the market on Friday and the stock paused, giving us another chance to put on an entry where there's a really defined entry and stop loss. But we're now closer to that reward level. So I want to get this across really, really um, clearly because it's kind of important. Having a good idea is different from having a good trade. I want to say that again so, you, you know, so I'm not misquoted. A good idea doesn't necessarily always mean a good trade. A good trade is a good idea plus the optimal entry. And the optimal entry implies the reward potential is justifying the risk. So I want to kind of tie that back to two stocks. Number one is Carvana. So we can see that where we are now and the risk to the next reward kind of tightened up a little bit, right? So in this particular instance, going back to what we would call position management, I would not have full share size in this position until it pauses above 20, because then you see we really don't have any significant levels, almost double of where it is at 20. So hopefully the biggest thing that I, I want to really have this visualization in your head starting with the week is that just finding a good idea is not the whole trade. Then you have to determine what's the right position size for the current spot that you are thinking about entering a new position. So that last part is what's the right position size. OK, in our community, we'll technically we we'll typically call that a P1 position, position one, meaning initial position size. 
Some other ideas where, you know, they're kind of, I'll give you probably one of the best examples from last month, uh, SMCI, where the stock just, it doubled in May. But more importantly, what I want to talk about is clearly, right, bullish gap, you got to push and a pause, bullish gap. And then we went sideways for about a week and a half. We cleared all of these levels, went sideways for about a week and a half before this move. So you could have gotten a little bit better position size in here because you got validation and you got a pause and you got justified and an easy spot to manage risk. And then you got another one over here before this big move higher. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because the stock actually almost went up $100 from this spot. So you can actually get a good visualization. Hopefully you can take a snapshot of those of how to determine when it makes more sense to have a little bit extra initial position size. I want to tell you right now, it's something that's really important. And a lot of people that come into our community just have absolutely no idea that every trade is different. And because every trade is different, that requires different trade management. Some profits you want to take right away because the market conditions are a little bit tougher, but you've got a good spot and a good idea at that moment. Some ideas, the whole road is open and you can step on the gas and hang on a little longer. That's what separates somebody who is a fantastic trader who sees their PL going up and up and up from somebody who's struggling with maybe just keep going three steps forward, three steps back. And you just haven't learned to make that distinction yet, asking the question, what's available right now? And then taking the right position size and game planning the right target for that moment. Now, I want to be clear about something because we had somebody comment on this recently. You don't want to put limits on targets. So I want to be clear about this. We actually have a two-step process. Again, we're getting back into two-step, just kind of thinking things through, right? There's the initial profit target to justify the risk on the initial position. So we're basically saying, okay, if I risk X amount, what's the next likely place this thing can go to to justify that risk? That's the initial target, but we're not saying we're getting out at that spot. At that spot, then we shift over into one of our trailing stop loss methods to see how much more is available in that trade. And this stock right here is probably one of the best examples of that. So remember, you might want to pause that, take some notes, because we just covered a lot of trade and management type stuff. So the other idea that we've been watching as far as breaking out is Wayfair. Wayfair actually starting to show some good volume over here after the stock finally got out of this box. And you can actually see now there's actually a box within a box, right? So we finally got out of this bigger one, but that started when we finally got beyond this $37, $38 level. And now you can see we're actually pausing above $42.50. Some minor resistance up over here. And then the next major level is way up here at 72 and change. But let's kind of bring that right back to trade management. Wayfair right now, let me actually, let me actually show you the, stock, the chart again. How much order flow has been stacked in this idea? And what does that mean for initial position size? So we can actually see here, we're really only talking about this bullish gap and then one follow through day on Thursday. So that means we're looking at two days of stacked order flow coming out of multiple months of accumulation. It's good. It's exciting. The volume supported it. But to be smart, you have to work your position because we're not leaning on a lot of stacked order flow. We actually haven't even had the first push and the pause yet. It's just the first move. And I want to kind of tie that back into one of the other uh, stronger sect uh, industry groups that are on my watch list this morning. Uh, which is this group over here. So I just want to point out American Express. So this is a great example of a stock that clearly broke bearish order flow. And by the way, look at how many of these ideas are breaking the order flow on bullish gaps followed by energy candlesticks. That's really a big part of what you want to see. This is a, another idea where we now have six days of bullish order flow, six days of buying pressure, but... What we don't have right now is the optimal entry. This is kind of where you got to really elevate yourself. Again, I want you to keep it simple. I, I want to make sure that you're like, I know exactly what I'm looking for, and I know exactly what the right decision is. So we started out today talking about pick a side. Now we're getting into, okay, the side is a vicious momentum move to the upside with bullish gaps, big green energy candlesticks, 
Great close on the highs on Friday and Thursday, but now we're a little extended from the optimal entry. So now you have a decision. And let's just define optimal entry one more time. Optimal entry means you have an obvious side to the market. So you've recognized a dominant side of order flow, but then the optimal entry is a little bit different. The optimal entry is if I'm about to buy it right now, is there price action likely based on what this stock normally does and how much risk do I need to take to justify putting that trade on? Okay. So in other words, is risk reward likely? Is the reward potential likely? So a lot of stocks are super obvious, but if they normally do this much and it's recently done and taken up all of that, and you only have this much left in the trade, that means different trade management. So hopefully I'm, I'm opening your eyes a little bit today to really think that not every trade is the same. Not every trade is a simple, let's just get in there and buy it because it was, it was in the scanner last night. Just think it's not hard. It's just one level deeper of what kind of risk is the right risk for right now. When you really start, and again, you might want to pause it and write that down, but these are the little things that keep you in the game because sometimes less risk is the right idea while you're working that position, like American Express right now. If you even take the trade at all, you might want to let it pause a little bit. Or there's other ideas where you're like, oh my, like the chart in SMCI that I just showed you, everything is lining up. It's the right sector, the right industry group, the right price action, manageable risk, stacked order flow. And those are the ideas where you can get in there a little bit more. Now, just to get, again, give you another visualization of what kind of, how we kind of break this down. We like to break it down in three different ways. So the quality of the idea will influence what's the right risk allocation for that idea. So you got some ideas where you're like, okay, just kind of rallied a little bit. Maybe I'll start to build what we call an initial position. So that would be 1% of the capital. Again, these are educational. Everybody's got to make their own decision. I'm showing you how I do it. Maybe some other ideas where the market might not be that obvious, but you have a sector that is beautiful, kind of like we've had in semiconductors recently, right? If we take a look at what semiconductor stocks have been doing, I think everybody knows that this little group over here just absolutely on fire. So when that happens, you can size up a little bit more, maybe hold a little longer, maybe allocate 3% instead of 1% because you have a pocket of opportunity that's pretty good. But then you get what we had on Friday, where across multiple sectors and across market internals, where everything you were looking at was on the same page, that would go from 1% to 3% to 5% in that moment, as long as you were at the optimal entry for the objective. So day traders on Friday could be very, very aggressive. The whole picture was on the same side. The VIX, the ticks, all the market internals were on the same side. And as we showed you in that chart of Caterpillar, you can get super aggressive. Now, where we are today, now we, the big challenge is picking a side and then picking the right optimal entry. So before we actually get to the longs, I just want to point out a couple of ideas if the market should happen to have a little bit of profit taking this week, you have a decision now. Do I want to hedge my long positions by holding the stocks that I bought in short selling, either directly through the stock itself or buying puts, expecting weak stocks to go down? Now, again, you don't want to short sell strong stocks. That's not a good strategy. But what if you found stocks that are already bearish, did not rally with the market? And if the market sees profit taking this week, those stocks are the most likely to go down if we see profit taking. So there's two ways of handling that. If you're not in a position and the market goes down, those would be the stocks to short sell for gains, right? So if it goes down and you actually correct on that, you actually make money as it goes down. Or if you want to hold your longer positions, you could take those same trades, short sell weak stocks and hedge. So I'm going to give you a couple of ideas that meet that criteria. So if we kind of hop on over uh, to the other side of the market, um, we want it, these are technically what we would call stocks that did not participate in the rally. And if the market goes down, or even if you just want to short sell them, these are the first stocks that I would take a look at. So these are short sale candidates inside my list for today. So we have DG. We also have Amgen, which you can see is actually down at a big level. It just finally got below this level here. Uh, and we also have Crocs. Crocs, which was a great breakout a few weeks ago. You can actually see now Crocs is making lower highs. It's up a little bit this morning. Next level's down at 101. If you can get below 101, it's got some room to go. 
So we also have some other ideas that have punched down, Foot Locker being one of them. Foot Locker has not rallied either. So now the next thing I want to talk about here is I want to walk you through how I game planned for coming into this week. So we always start out with first looking at the big picture, looking at the market. Then I go from the market into the sectors. And that's really where sector rotation happens. And then from sector rotation, we start to break it down into which ideas go into my game plan for this week. So again, not all of these stocks are necessarily for today, but what I want to walk you through is how I game plan my ideas. And you'll, you'll see a lot of the language where I say worthy of a watch list. So worthy of a watch list means that there is a dominant side that's obvious. Then we let our trading platform, provided it's all built out properly, to tell us which of those stocks that are worthy watching are floating to the stock to the top of that list. And that could rotate every hour. It could rotate every day. But the bottom line is when your software is set up properly with the right stocks, you're always going to be in the right ideas at the right time. And there's really no better feeling as a trader to say, you know what, I expect to make money if something happens because I have the right stocks in my watch list in the first place. So let's actually first take a look at the market. And this is the breakdown of what actually unfolded uh, last week. Let me actually make that a little bit bigger for you so you can see it. So you can actually see, obviously, Friday was just amazing. But this is really where it starts to get a little more exciting, where something other than technology started to light it up a little bit more than just one day. So remember what we're talking about here. If you remember the language I'm using, stacked order flow. Stacked order flow, Friday, great, one big day. But how many days has that? Is it five days, two weeks, a month? That's real money being allocated to the market. That's the smart money footprints that we start to piggyback. And then obviously the trade management and the position management comes after that. But remember, the very first thing, you don't, don't, you don't need to look for an entry if you can't find a good idea in the first place. So this is kind of the process of where it starts, okay? So if we kind of work our way down and continue, so obviously you can see we're starting to work our way out a little bit. This is now where we start to get into the actual rotation and start to find some good ideas. You can actually see we actually broke this down for you. We talked about the heavy volume reversal in um, healthcare last week. We started to break down the industrial sector and gave you some stocks that are near breakouts, stocks that are already at breakouts and stocks that just popped. Boeing, we actually mentioned as well. If you haven't traded Boeing, it's actually been in a trading range for all of this year. We have an alert set for 216 in Boeing. So what I want to do right now is um, I want to give you an opportunity to download this entire list for the week. There's also a very big rundown in there uh, on options and trading the options market this again coming into this week and the uh the depth of what's going on because implied volatility just absolutely exploded obviously right so even if you could afford the options doesn't necessarily mean those are a good idea as well so a lot of the principles between stocks and options kind of work in together we also have in there uh the podcast for this week we actually did some uh fundamental breakdown on ai stocks as well let me actually show you that at the top of the uh at the top there um right over here we actually have an AI bubble discussion with David Trainer, so make sure you click on that link um, as well and download that episode of the podcast too. So we got, I'm giving you everything today heading into this week, but more importantly, hopefully I'm giving you some good lessons to really think through differently how you game plan and find stocks and just ask yourself that last question. Is this the optimal entry? Pick a side, pick a spot. That's the two big questions to ask before you even hit that button, all right? Thank you so much for joining me here today. I really, really appreciate it. If you have any follow-up questions, absolutely leave a comment below the video. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If we did a good job today, please also do me a favor, hit that uh, thumbs up button and make sure you subscribe. You can download this copy of the Daily Ticker Newsletter in the description below. All right. Have an awesome week, everybody. I'll speak to you soon.